Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. We're taping here at the Hollywood Museum, and we're celebrating with our high soprano, <laughs> whom I called mezzo-soprano before, yeah. um, singer, performer, Julia McGinnis, who grew up on the Lower East Side, attended that prestigious high school uh, of music and arts, and as a teenager, starred opposite Zero Mostel in Fiddler on the Roof. She was on Broadway. She sang at the Volks Opera in Vienna, at the Met in New York, and at the Grand in Geneva, which was really a, a big influence on you, right? We're going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. So she went on and on with Grammy Awards and Golden Lions and Golden Mics and Golden Cameras. And she's at the Odyssey Theater right now um, singing Kurt Vile. So you performed in Salome in Geneva. Yes, with uh, Beja, Maurice Beja was the, he's a great choreographer, and he, but he uh, directed the opera. But that then led to this film that you did. Yes, well, <laughs> yeah, because they were looking for Carmen, and he was a great friend with the producer, Toscan Duplantier. And what happened was, well, they were sitting at dinner, and it's because I had just sung Lulu at the Met. Oh, you had just sung Lulu. Lulu at the Met, you see. And so I jumped in for Teresa Stratus. I had never sung it before, but I worked on it one year. And when I sang it, it was just like singer perfect. So, so they heard about that, and then I did Salome, you see. Beja took me for Salome. Oh, I see, but I, I had see. had a huge career in Germany and, uh, and Austria before that. But all in the opera, all on opera, yeah. all in opera, all on the stage. Yes. Nothing like you're doing now at the Odyssey where I've you're done, alone. Oh, I've done concerts, many, many concerts, only because when my kids got to a certain age and I couldn't travel with them anymore, I said, I'm not going to be away for, you know, two oh. months in an opera house. Oh. So I started doing a lot of concerts. But oh. I'm, I mostly like being, you know, really on stage. I mean, I, had, I took, I was singing Covent Garden, Manon, I took my whole family with me when I did Carmen, I took my whole family with me. It was like really, you know, to be a mother at the same time as the breadwinner. Oh, you know. I didn't realize that, that, that you had had such an opera career. Of course. I already sang as a teenager with Giancarlo Menotti in the scene of Bleecker Street, where it's uh, Anina, and she has all these arias, right. and I'm a teenager. I sang with uh, Le Bernstein with the Philharmonic in my teens. And then that's when you were on Broadway and as then a teenager, I, yes, right? Were Broadway, you yeah. So I learned from being on stage with geniuses. Really? Jerome Robbins. I know. I mean, geniuses, but very so young. You were very young, so mm -hmm. you were really absorbing everything. Yes. And, and it was on stage. It wasn't like I was studying. No, it that's was different. It was on stage. But, but how did you change from opera to, say, musical theater? Always that's, before. From, was it? Of course. West Side Story was already. At the same time I was singing uh, uh, with Giancarlo Menotti, Saint of the Bleecker Street, I was singing uh, on Broadway. I was singing, you know, I did West Side Story. I love to dance. I, I always say, okay, so I'm married to my voice, but my lover is dance. Is that right? So you, yeah. were, you took all those classes, though, at your high school? No, 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 not at... The thing is, it wasn't really, you know... What happened was, you want to really know the yeah, story? Yeah, I really want okay, to know. Okay, <laughs> so the slums of New York, really the slums of New York, and on the corner there's a little uh, dancing school, a little <laughs> dancing school that took all the poor kids, and we didn't have to pay because I had curly hair, and i dance and sing. And you were little, and, and you could I was little. <laughs> And at three, I hear, an, my family hears a knock on the door because we're down the road, and the little kid in Madame Butterfly uh, was sick, and it was early evening, and they came and, can we take your daughter? The little kid, the, the boy, little kid, the little yes, boy, yeah, they're yeah. taking your daughter. Yes, so they took me, <laughs> they took me to, I don't think it was the Met, and um, I was sound asleep, it was, I'm three years old. Oh my gosh. And they go, they put a wig on and a kimono, and I'm thinking, this thing doesn't fit, but I won't tell anybody, and then, you know, and then they, it was, I'm hearing this music and these voices, and, and, the, he, he brings the, the side of the curtain. He says, you see that woman? I go, yeah. And he got three years old, just woke up. 
run to her and say, Mama, Mama, Mama. Oh, they gave you words too? Yeah, Mama, Mama, Mama. <laughs> so I go, and I go, Mama, Mama, and I see a whale with eye makeup streaming down because she is sweating so much. Oh, my gosh. And she a had, whale? A whale. And she had toothpicks <laughs> in her hair that went like that, and she had a beehive on her head. I mean, I'm hallucinating. And she's at the moment where Cho Cho Sang sings hysterically, a star, a star, like this. And you're like, no, I went, ah! You did? I started screaming. Oh, I started so screaming, funny. so she had to sing the whole aria with me in her arms. So she grabbed I'm, you? Yes, but I'm screaming in her ear. I'm screaming, like this, and then she sort of like drop kicks me off the stage after her <laughs> aria, practically. <laughs> and they promised me ice cream, everything, whatever. So I go back on stage at the end. Oh, you do again? Of course, he goes at the end when she commits suicide. Oh, right. So, and he takes the boy? Oh, no, but it was most beautiful because... Because what happened was, was that since I'm small, I have to see, she sings this aria, which is, oh, look, at, look in your mother's eyes so that you do not oh, forget. forget. Her, so right. that you and it was such love, and I was transfixed. So she sits, she sits me, and she says, take these little flags and do this. <laughs> and the thing that's most amazing was, I'm so small that I only saw the lights, but I didn't see the musicians. I didn't see the conductor. And it was waves of music coming at me. And it's a genius, Puccini. So it went, dee da 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 It was magical. And from then, I did all the kids in all the operas. By the time I was in my early teens, I could sing with a soprano voice. Isn't that... that then is... I went to Vienna and I sang for 10 years every role. And I had my own... Uh, what did I have? I had uh, uh, my own uh, TV show in Germany where I... You know, everything. That was then fantastic. Then after that was Lulu and Germany and, 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 Vienna. and Salome and then Carmen. The movie. Yes. Carmen the movie. And yeah. then in between, there's like 30 CDs and DVDs. Yeah, just what and you do over what, and over again. It's just what you do over and over? Yeah, when yeah. do you have time to do those things? In between. <laughs> it's a singer's life. And then you have to learn everything with the accents, right? So you have yeah. a coach. Well, it's, yeah. When I, with Carmen, it was, I had the greatest coach, I need rice, because I had never sung in, in, in French. But they had oh, auditioned oh. 300 girls, and they couldn't find a, sal a, a Carmen, except oh. Maurice Bejar was sitting with the producer, and he said, you know, the only one who could do it is Julie McGinnis, because she can dance, she can act. And he knew about dancing. He had his own company. He's a choreographer. The Bejar, yeah, yeah. Bejar Co uh, Ballet Company. It was brilliant, yeah. And then... We've talked about all these roles you've done, all the singing you've done, all mm -hmm. the CDs. How do you keep your voice? Ah, three books. One is by a German scientist called Husler. Another one is by a great, great German singer in 1902 at the end of her career, where she, where she was still singing like a goddess. So you read those? Lily Lehmann. No, oh, they're real, yes. real techniques. The real technique Lee. about how to keep your voice. Oh, so, they, so you've learned... Those I things. correct my voice with that because it's the old techniques which are the ones. Well, they lasted a long time, yes. didn't they? Those people. So, so I saw you in Diva on the Verge. Oh. I saw you in the uh, what human voice? How do you say it in Le French? Voix humaine. Oh, that was so great, Thank and you. you sang for an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. No, it's an hour actually. <laughs> Yeah, I just did it in Germany with the most amazing young uh, uh, conductor from, uh, direct, uh, director from Iceland, Tolly for Andersen. Brilliant. How do you keep that going? You do it so many times a week, right? No. In opera, you sing maybe twice. Oh, so that you don't have to do. Oh, ah, I yeah. see. And the, and the other one, Diva on the Verge? Diva on the Verge, same thing. Like two oh. days in between. Very oh, rare. Once in a while, maybe one after another. But that's very difficult. Oh, I didn't know that mm -hmm. you took time. I thought it Must. was like on the stage, where no, you, no. I mean on theater, where you no, just no. went out. It's oh. physically impossible. I one of the other things that I wanted to talk to you about, because you had this great, before we get into the Kurt Vile, this story about um, singing with Mahagoni, 
And, oh, yeah. and Lada Lenya came well, back. Well, yeah, I was singing. I sang Mahogany twice, actually, once in Vienna, where I was eight months pregnant. <gasps> so I'm singing the role of a prostitute, eight months pregnant. <laughs> so I never turned sideways because <laughs> I carried like this. <laughs> Right? right in front. <laughs> and that, yes, right in here. And, and then I sang it at the Met Opera, uh, and, uh, and uh, um, uh, Lenya was there, and she came back with a rose. And I mean, I've won, I've won like the, the Edison Prize for the recording of, uh, of Seven Deadly Sins with uh, Michael Tills and Thomas, and I was like so proud of that. But to get a rose from Lotte Lenya. And that's, and, and it was, she was the one who sang the vile songs, right? All of them. She, you know, she had an affair with both with Brecht oh. and with Kurt Weill. And the joke between one was, Alenia Lotti. Alenia Lotti. <laughs> I'll lend you Lotti. Oh, I'll lend you Lotti. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did well with her, didn't they? Yeah. They both did well with her. So tell us a little bit about the show at the Odyssey. The thing is, is I, I was doing this uh, show. I started doing it in... Um, in uh, the Châtelet in Paris in oh. February. Oh, you just as February? Yes, oh. and that was constructed. We put it together for the Châtelet. And now oh. we're starting to do it again in November in France. And I haven't sung it since then. And the luck happened that Beth um, Hogan called me and she said, do you have anything you can do at the Odyssey? We just lost uh, Stephen Burkhoff, who was going to do something, you got a film, and we have this time for you. Oh. And I said, that comes so in handy. I can, I can, can do it here. It's a lot of words. It's in German, French, and English, and it just really, I can't just jump into it in, 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 uh, you To know, go over there. So this is like a, yeah, it's like a, a almost great, like a rehearsal. Yes, it's a great rehearsal in front of an audience. It's a, a real rehearsal. Role. Yes. Who's directing you? Um, not really, but I will have my ex, my, you see, my fourth ex-husband, he'll come and, uh, you He know, is now? Yeah, of course. Is he? Of my fourth ex, yeah. And they're all four in Wait, a satellite, but this one it? came down Medic? with Peter Medic. <laughs> <He'll>, <laughs> Peter Medic. It. But basically, it's more the lighting and stuff. Oh, and, right. and he, you know, we may be divorced and there are <laughs> issues, et cetera, but there are never any issues when it comes to our art. To together. professionalism. He's oh, professional, you're professional. Yes, and we agree on so many I was going to say, yeah. you can trust him. Yeah. You know, I can say, should I do this? You know, because usually I am my own motor. Uh -huh. but, but so who wrote the s script? Do you there, talk in between? No, this I'll just talk. Because the one I did in, in, uh, in the Châtelet is one of, with one of their most brilliant concert pianists. And oh. so he was, uh, you know, Bruno Fontaine is somebody. You won't does. have a pianist? I will you have will. a wonderful pianist, but she's uh, not a concert, a famous concert I see, pianist. I see. But still, she has, I, I'm only choosing her because I really love the way she accompanies and love the way she plays. She's uh, Japanese. Um, uh, Mitsuku Mori, uh, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, that, you don't that. have to speak Japanese yeah, in no, this, no. right? French, right. German. Yeah, French, German, and English. and English. But I'll be putting it together very more sort of relaxed for this probably because that one what was were you very wear? intense. What were you wear? I don't even know. Do you know what I mean? Because I wore the, in any case, this is a thing of all black. And I know. Because it's, it's, I want to stay... Brecht. I want to stay the oldest style possible, the the real style, you know. Well, I think we have to see it before it goes to where next? Uh, it goes to France in, uh, oh, where am I That's going? okay, France and then when? Yeah, and, where? and then it will go to Germany and then it goes oh. to Iceland and then it goes to, yeah. I'm so glad, Julia. I've been wanting to see you and have you on the show yeah. for years and years, oh, so thank, thank you. you. It's a great pleasure. Thank you, and thanks for watching the Joan Quinn Profiles. Write to J-A-Q-U-I-N-N-1 at AOL.com.